How's it going everyone? It's Chow here and today we are going to talk a little bit about phenotypic plasticity, so let's get started. All right, in the most straightforward way of explaining it, phenotypic plasticity is the ability of one genotype to produce more than one phenotype when exposed to different environments. So that I think makes a lot of sense. The same genotype producing different phenotypes. So obviously you can think about maybe regulating proteins and how genes are being expressed at different times, different temperatures, different amounts of sunlight, different amounts of uh, nutrients, or maybe changes in pH. So this plasticity is this ability to shift due to different types of environmental factors. And we can see a lot of ex uh, explanations and examples of such within the natural world. So one of these examples is with Daphnia. So Daphnia, also known as water fleas, look normally like this. But when in the presence of predatory fish, they can actually grow out the spines, uh, as shown here by this individual on the left. So normally they're more like this one here on the right, and then when there's a predatory fish around, they can actually change the shape of their entire body and grow these spines to protect themselves. So what's really fascinating though is that plasticity can evolve to be more or less plastic, and in the case of the Daphnia, they can, evol they can develop these long spikes in a relatively short period of time to ward off predators, but this is not always beneficial because once that predator leaves, and that Daphnia needs to go back and do its normal everyday business of feeding and surviving and foraging, it actually is detrimental to them because having these spines can actually affect their ability to swim. So they need to change it back from the spined form to a non-spined form in order to survive. And this is, again, that ability for the individual to have one genotype produce more than one phenotype when exposed to different environments, in this case, presence of a predator or absence of a predator. And just another example is with this particular group of uh, looks like Lepidopterans, I believe it's a moth, and this Nemoria caterpillar can actually have different appearances depending on their environment. And so you have this summer adult here, which is actually just the, um, the adult form, and you can see that during the spring, those caterpillars that are around during the spring actually look kind of like this, which looks very similar to the catkins of those trees or plants it's feeding on. In addition, you can look at a different form during the summer. So the summer ones are going to be hanging out on the branches. The catkins are no longer there, so being a catkin will make you very, very conspicuous. So you want to be a little bit more inconspicuous, and you look slightly different and match the branch. So depending on the season, the caterpillars can look different. And so they can have different appearances depending on their environment for camouflage depending on the season. So once again, we're just going back to this whole concept of phenotypic plasticity where you have an organism, one organism that has one genotype that has the ability to produce more than one phenotype from that one genotype when exposed to different environments. And this is often through different regulations of uh, macromolecules such as proteins um, and perhaps other macromolecules and other broadly processes as well. But for the scope of the course, just know that phenotypic plasticity is the ability of one genotype to produce more than one phenotype when exposed to different environments and perhaps get to know some examples where that is the case. So I hope you found this useful and as always, best of luck studying and I will see you in the next video. Take care.